All right, let's take a look at this practice page so that you can see the results and not just see them, but understand uh, where you might have gone wrong if you didn't get the right answer. So this middle column here is the limit as x approaches some value a, and of course that value a will be in the limit down here. And then in the last, it is what is the limit as x goes to either infinity or negative infinity. So we're giving you, I think we gave you seven problems, um, and I'll cover all seven of them. So the absolute value function, you could do this one by direct substitution. As x approaches 0, you can just sub in 0 here and you get out 0. Then as x goes to negative infinity, you really need to rely on your knowledge of the absolute value function. I think it's helpful just to sketch a graph. As x goes to negative infinity, the y value goes up to infinity. So the limit here is infinity, and of course it is completely OK. And I would say preferred if you wrote DNE as your response. The next one, SGN, stands for signum. Let me write that out for you, S-I-G-N-U-M. And this will come back to you time and time again in this course. The reason why is because this is a terrific piecewise function that is written very simply as absolute value of x over x, but it has all sorts of great properties of continuity. So we will talk about it throughout the course. Uh, there is a discontinuity here at 0. The function is undefined where x equals 0. So what you'll find is that there is no limit as x approaches 0 because the limit coming in from the right and the limit coming in from the left are not the same. So the overall limit does not exist. But then if you look at the limit as x approaches negative 5, let's put negative 5 over here. As we come in from the left and the right towards negative 5, the y value is steady at negative 1. And then last, as x goes to infinity, we just have this horizontal line here at y equals 1, so that limit equals 1. The next graph, or the next function, is just a horizontal line at y equals 6. And so the limit at any place on a horizontal line is the value of the line itself. And that means as you go to infinity or negative infinity, the limit will also be the value of the line. The cosine function, you guys know well from trig, looks about like this. And to the left, OK. So as x goes to 0, you can do direct substitution and plug in 0 here. And you know that cosine of 0 is 1. Yes, you need to know all of your unit circle key values at the top of your head. You just need to know them off the top of your head throughout this course. The limit as f of, of f of x of cosine as x approaches infinity does not exist because you'll see that this graph keeps on going up and down and up and down and up and down. And it does not hone in on a single value. So the only possible answer is does not exist. The next one is 1 over x. If we plug in x equals 0 into 1 over x, we get an undefined function. So direct substitution will not work. We actually have to look at the graph. And you guys should know what the graph of 1 over x looks like. And you can see that as we approach 0 from the right, the graph goes up to infinity. And from the left, the graph goes down to negative infinity. The infinities are not equal to each other, therefore the limit does not exist. And then the limits at infinity and negative infinity are both 0 because this is a larger degree in the denominator. The degree of x is 1, but the degree of any constant is 0. And you can see it on the graph here as well. As the graph goes to both positive and negative infinity on the x-axis, the y values do tend toward um, the x-axis itself. Next, this guy has um, a vertical asymptote at 2, so I'm going to do this one by graphing uh, just so you can see what the graph looks like. And it is useful to know what generally how to graph. Um, vertical asymptote at 2, and then you're going to have an x-intercept at negative 4. And then with the ratio of the leading coefficients of 1, you're going to have a horizontal asymptote at 1. So I can kind of sketch the rest of this graph. If I plug in x equals 0, I get out y-intercept of negative 2, so that fits in here nicely. And then I have another branch up here. So I could have done x going to 1. I could have done that by direct substitution, because I'll get 5 over negative 1, which is negative 5. As x approaches 2, I needed the graph to show that the graph goes up to infinity from the right of 2 and down to negative infinity from the left of 2. So that limit does not exist, because the left and right-hand limit are not equal. And then the limits at infinity and negative infinity are 1, because that is the ratio of the leading coefficients. And you have the same degree in the numerator and denominator of this rational function. 
Last problem, let's go ahead and factor that denominator. Oh, can't factor it. How many of you tried that? I just realized x squared plus four is sum of squares, not factorable. So let's try direct substitution for the first one. If I plug in zero, I get out negative two over four, which is negative one half. If I plug in negative two, I'll get negative four over eight, which is again, negative one half. And if I plug in x equals two, I get out zero. I can use direct substitution on all of these because with no zeros in the denominator, I have no discontinuities for the function. And then the limits as x approaches negative and positive infinity are zero because I have a higher degree in the denominator, degree of two versus a degree of one.